Hello, my most amazing artist. How's everybody doing today? I hope that you are ready to make some pizza because I am ready. But first, let's do our art class catchphrase. I make messes. I make mistakes. But deep inside, I get what it takes. I am an artist. All right, guys, today we're going to be making pizza out of salt dough clay. You are going to need a quarter cup of salt, a quarter cup of water, and a half a cup of flour to make, wait for it, are you ready? Your very own pizza sculpture. You're also going to need something to mix those ingredients in, something to mix those ingredients with. I'll be using a spatula and You'll also want food coloring to change the color of your clay. No food coloring? No problem. I will be using paint because I don't have food coloring either. If you don't have the ingredients to make clay or you just don't want to, I get it. You can always use Play-Doh to make your pizza. Before we get started, a big shout out to, you know who, Ticonderoga. That's right. Did you know that they're recognizing teachers every day this week for Teacher Appreciation Week? Oh, that's pretty stinking awesome. Thank you, Ticonderoga, for always supporting me and our art lessons and art class with Cassie. Y'all are the bandit All right, get those pinkies out, people, because we are going to be sculpting, but first, making our very own clay. <clears throat> I pick a promise that I will do my best. I will finish what I start, and I will keep a positive Pizza-tastic attitude. Mwah. All right, I'm gonna go take off this pizza. Ooh, huh, now I can actually move my head around. Awesome, all right guys, let's go ahead and get started. Let's begin by making our salt dough clay. All you're going to need is a quarter cup of water, that's one fourth, a quarter cup of salt, again, that's one fourth and a half a cup of flour. This will give you just the right amount of clay to make your slice of pizza. I've already placed one quarter cup of water into my bowl. Now I'm going to be adding my salt. So make sure your measuring cup is on a nice flat surface. That way you can lean down and really make sure you're only getting the exact measurement into that cup. Perfect. Pouring my salt in with my water. Next up is the flour. For that, I'll need a half a cup. If you want to make more of this kind of clay, maybe you and a friend are both making a slice, then you'll just want to double this recipe. To double it, that means you would have a whole cup of flour and a half a cup of water and a half a cup of salt. Oops, that's pretty much what I just put in my measuring cup. Let's get rid of some of that because I only need a half a cup of flour. One more time for the people in the back. A half a cup of flour, a quarter cup of water, quarter cup of salt. We're also going to be using some food coloring in just a moment. All right, once you've got that correct measurement, finally, go ahead, pour it into the rest, and let's stir this up. When you're stirring, you might notice that at first it's really watery, and then when you start mixing, it's gonna get a little bit crumbly. That's okay, once it gets to the kind of crumbly state where stirring it doesn't do any good anymore, that's when we're going to be kneading this salt dough. And when I say kneading, I mean squishing and continuing to mix up those ingredients. All right, now look, my dough looks a little bit dry, but that's okay because after I'm done kneading it, if it still feels that way, I can add a little bit more water. And go ahead and dig in. And if yours is really sticky, that means perhaps you used a little too much water and more flour is needed. Just add a little bit at a time. If it feels a little dry and crumbly, then perhaps you need to add more water. I'm just going to now finish kneading or squishing the dough. Some of it's gonna be left over in the bowl and that's okay. I think my dough looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is start to add some color. So grab that food coloring. If you don't have food coloring, but you happen to have paint, I'm using acrylic paint. 
That works great too. That's like craft store paint. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do with my little blob of clay is divide it in half. So I have two equal pieces. One half is going to be used for my pizza crust. So I'm gonna set that aside. The other half is going to be made for the toppings of my pizza. So for that, I'm gonna divide this clay into three equal pieces. So I've got one, a two and a three. Now, if you end up with one that's like really little small, then just even your pieces of clay out by taking from the big one and giving to the small one. Okay, now I have three pieces. I'm going to be using the primary colors to change this color of this clay. The primary colors are yellow, red, get back in there, and blue. The reason I'm not using these other colors is because I can make them with my clay using these primary colors. Now this step is going to make your hands a little bit stained, so you might wanna wear gloves or have a wet towel on hand. I'm gonna begin by taking this piece of clay and kind of smooshing it flat into a slab. And with my food coloring, just adding a couple of drops of food coloring. Food coloring is concentrated. That means it's very dark in color, so you don't need a lot. You can always go back later and add more. Notice how I brought the sides in so I can kind of try to keep my hands clean, but look, it's art time. We're gonna all end up with a little bit of rainbow hands and that's okay. Now I'm just kind of squishing and massaging that color, baby, color into the clay. And once I've done that a little bit, now I can start rolling it into a coil playing with it, massaging it, and that what I'm doing is helping to work that color throughout the clay. Also, it would appear I'm helping to work that color all over my hands. The food coloring, because it has water in it, has now made my clay a little bit softer. But if your clay is dry and crumbly, then put a little bit of water on your fingertip and then add that to the clay. If your clay is ever crumbly, it's trying to tell you, Hey, I'm thirsty, I need some more water. So give it a little bit of water and that will help your clay work a lot better. All right, I think I've massaged all of that beautiful blue throughout my clay. So I think I'm done with this one. Now I'm just going to repeat the same process and try to get some of this food coloring off my hand. You can see that's working out really nicely. And now I'm gonna try to dye or go ahead and dye the other two colors of clay using the same process. Squish, add a couple of drops. I can always add more later if I need it, right? So start with just two, that's what a couple means, and then you could always add more if it's not dark enough. Earlier today when I was making some of this dough, when I added the red to the white of the clay, my clay turned pink. The reason that happened is because white makes a color light. My clay is white and as it was mixing with the red, you can see it's doing it now, it made it pink. Kind of like my blue is a light blue because of the white. My red is a light red or pink because of the white. When you make a color light, like I did with my white clay, it's called a tint. If you want to, you could always add another little drop if you want it to be more of a darker value of red or a darker red. If you liked the lighter value, then you could have just left it. But I wanted to show you just in case you feel like your color is a little light. Notice I only added one more drop. You don't need a lot of that concentrated color. All right. Now I'm ready to make my yellow. Now you might be wondering why I have paint here instead of food coloring. It's because I don't have that color in food coloring. So I'm gonna be using paint. This kind of clay is not edible. Think about the ingredients we used. Salt, flour, and water. The salt will make this too salty to taste. So you definitely won't want to taste it. It's just for sculpting, kind of like the clay you might use at school or even in your home. If you do use paint like me, you can see it's a little bit messier. You might not need as much as what I just added, but you live and you learn. Once you've got your three primary colors made, 
you could go ahead and work on your pizza. So if you're excited to start, you could just skip ahead. Or why don't we make the secondary colors? So let's think of the colors that we currently don't have. We don't have orange, green, or purple. Those are the secondary colors. We can make those, but you can only make them with these three colors. These are the primary colors. Primary means first. You always have to have them first. You have to start with these guys right here. I'm gonna actually arrange them like this, and why don't we start by making orange? Look at my primary colors. What two primary colors do you think would make orange? Hmm. Red and yellow make orange. So I'm gonna take a little bit of red, just about the size of a, an M&M, and a little bit of orange, and I'm gonna squish them together and just kind of roll them around, making them into a coil and a sphere, and a coil and a sphere, until I have the makings of a beautiful orange color. Now, if your orange looks too red, then try adding more yellow. It's just a reddish orange and it needs more yellow if that's what you want. If it's too yellow, if it's a yellow orange and you want it to be more red, then just add more red. Okay, so I've got my orange and I'm gonna add these so that it's like the order of the colors in the rainbow, red and yellow make orange. Now let's try yellow and blue. Same thing, I'm just gonna grab a little piece of yellow, grab a little piece of blue, skirt them together, and let's see if we can get a brand new color. Roll a coil, roll a sphere. By the way, if your clay is cracking like mine was, just put a little water on your finger Roll it back up, and look, that's a nice green. I can still see it's kind of tie-dye. I can still see some of the other colors in there. If you want it to be a pure green, just continue rolling. There's my green, and then the last color I'm missing is purple. The two colors I haven't tried mixing together are red and blue. Now that I have almost all of my colors made, I'm ready to start working on my pizza. I'm gonna get my other pizza that I created earlier today out. Now there's two ways you could go about making your pizza. You could make your pizza like a personal pan pizza, meaning you're just going to make a circle like a cookie and it can be a miniature pizza, a full pizza. If you wanna make a slice of pizza, I can show you both ways and then you can decide. So my purple's looking pretty good. You're going to be building your pizza sculpture on a plate. It helps if you have a paper plate. If you don't have a paper plate, a piece of cardboard would work great. Think about it. Pizza comes to your house on delivery in a cardboard box, so cardboard would be great. I have a paper plate, so that's what I'm going to be using. All right, I'm gonna show you first how to make a personal pizza small little circle pizza. Easy breezy, take your extra clay. If it got a little dry, just add some water, massage that in, and let's go ahead and roll it into a sphere. And then place it in the middle of your plate. But before that, let's squish it just a little bit between our hands, there we go. Put it in the middle of your plate. And now I'm going to start in the center, pushing down firmly and then working out from the center. But notice that I'm leaving a little bit of an edge for the crust. So I'm starting in the center and then pushing it out, kind of stretching the clay. It's okay if the clay gets really thin down here. There we go. That's pretty easy. So if you decide that you wanna make a pizza like this, Great, all of your toppings can go in here. If you wanna make a slice of pizza, I'm gonna peel this off, then here's what you can do. It's a little tricky, but you can do it. You roll a sphere, roll a thick coil, place that on your plate. Now imagine what a triangle shape is going to look like. 
That's what we have to sculpt this into. Begin by pressing it into the plate, just kind of pinching the sides at the bottom, and now I'm just kind of stretching it out. Notice how my hand is right here to kind of keep the clay from getting stretched out like a full circle, because we're trying to squish it into a triangle. Now, if you make a boo-boo or you're just not happy with it, here's the good news, it's clay. All you have to do is squish it back up and try it again. Also, it's a piece of pizza. It's not supposed to be perfect. It's supposed to be all melty full of awesome goodness. All right, so now that this is finished, I'm gonna smash it a little bit more to make my pizza slice a little bigger. And then for the crust, I'm just gonna bring this side up. Done. And add a little water to where I see a crack. Now let's work on those toppings. What could you add to your pizza? If you wanted to start with something like a sauce, you could take a slab, actually a sphere of clay, squish it into a slab and start putting that on your pizza. But I'm gonna save some of this and I'm actually gonna start with cheese. There's lots of different ways you can make cheese. I'm going to use some coils of clay. So to make a coil, roll a sphere, roll up and down your hands, or you could even use a surface. Don't do this directly on your table though. Notice how I'm working on a surface of something else so it doesn't ruin what I've got. When you're making your cheese, your coils don't have to be as long as mine. They could be shorter coils. This is the fun part about making your pizza. You can do it any way you want to. Think about all the toppings you could add. You could add, I don't know, pepperoni, mushroom, pineapple, anchovies, and then you can start to add silly stuff. You could add a donut. <laughs> Who's to say you can't have a donut on some pizza? Um, somebody earlier today when I was making this with the art class with Cassie Kids, somebody even made a whole dessert pizza where everything on their pizza was something sweet instead of what's called savory. Savory means that it's salty, kind of like what a real pizza would be like. And this clay is pretty salty too, but we're not gonna eat it because that will be disgusting. All right, so I've got quite a bit of cheese by making my coils. Now, I think I'm gonna work on adding some pepperoni. So grab some of that red clay, and if I'm going too fast, just hit the pause button. That way you can stop me for a second so you can work on what you're making. To make a pepperoni, I just rolled a sphere, and then I squished it into a slab. Perfect. Notice how I'm not having to glue anything down. The clay will stick together on its own. If you're using a paper plate like me, your clay will also stick to that paper plate too. I think I'll add one more and you know what? I think I need more cheese. My pizza is not cheesy enough for me. So if you wanna do that, you could use some of your orange clay too for some cheese. This would give it a little bit of variety so that you don't have just the same colors on your pizza, right? We want it to be a really colorful pizza too. When you're finished with that, I'm gonna think, I'm gonna add some green pepper. So using some green clay, maybe roll a small little coil, bend it a little bit, overlap it onto some of the other little pieces and toppings that I wanna add. Let's see, maybe there's some peppers there. And ooh, I've got this big lump of blue. What could I do? that's blue on my pizza. Could that be anchovies? Ooh, and I could use the purple, I think, to make mushrooms or olives. Anything that you can imagine, you can sculpt it out of your clay. To make an olive, I'm just going to take a little piece of clay, what's drying out a little bit, roll a coil, bend it into a circle, like that. You see, there we go, ooh, sticky. I thought I'll add too much water. There we go. Maybe I'll add some more of those. For a mushroom, I could make two coils that come together like a T. So I've got this one. I'll bend it like that. Set this down. Make another one that's kind of vertical, just like that. Perfect. I think I'll add that guy right there. A purple mushroom. 
I don't know if I would eat it, but that's the color I've got. All right, guys, and if you're um, finished and you want to do a fork, I decided to use my extra clay for that. I bet you can even look at my clay and figure it out how I made it. All I did was I rolled a coil, put it on my plate, smooshed it into a slab. I rolled another coil and made it into a letter U and put another coil right in the middle. All right, I think I'm almost finished, but I still have all of this extra clay. If you want to, I say make more toppings, but if you're done, you could always wrap up your clay in plastic wrap and then keep it in the refrigerator so you can use it on another day. This pizza though, it'll be dry probably by tomorrow. It'll be a little fragile, so you'll have to be careful with it. All right guys, I hope you had fun making your salt dough pizza for Chef's Week. Please make sure you subscribe, that way you can keep creating with me. And if you had fun, don't forget to hit the like button. Thanks guys.